Welcome to Heek Soon to Draconis here are the dragons. And I'm finally back with more videos. So, did scientists detect hundreds of UAPs in the skies over Ukraine? Well, yes. Sort of. Kind of. Maybe? One of the strangest scientific papers I have seen in a long time was released on an open access distribution service operated by Cornell University called archive.org. Spelled A-R-X-I-V. Prior to discussing anything more, it is important to note that while most articles released on Archive are very accurate, the service itself includes this very important warning. Eprints posted on Archive are not peer-reviewed by Archive. They should not be relied upon without context to guide clinical practice or health-related behavior and should not be reported in news media as established information without consulting multiple experts in the field. And of course, the news media went and did the exact opposite of this. Reporting everywhere that UAPs had been detected over the skies of Ukraine. Now, that already means that this article has not been peer-reviewed, which is a very important process of the scientific method. Nobody has verified these claims. All we have is the author's words. So, the paper was written by a few Ukrainians. The primary author is Boris Zilayev, and he has a fairly extensive scientific background in astronomy and has written quite a few research papers, mostly about asteroids and near-Earth objects. They are fairly impressive and appear to follow strict scientific protocol from what I saw. However, I didn't have much time to really dig into all of his prior work. The point is, he appears to be a very skilled and experienced scientist and astronomer, with his prior history giving us no reason to doubt his claims which really makes this paper even stranger. Because this paper is very, very different from his other works. It is riddled with tons of irrelevant, inaccurate, and conflicting information, such as how most of the entire introduction section is about the United States' effort to research UAPs, which would be normal if this group was any part of the United States or had worked closely with NASA, but they don't. They have no ties to the United States. It's simply a long, irrelevant paragraph that seems to be only used to give the paper some form of credibility. One of the biggest issues that casts major doubts on the paper is that they refer to the UAPs as ships and craft several times, which is a big, big scientific no-no, as it demonstrates confirmation bias. You cannot call something unidentified in one, so in one sentence, then identify it in another. The article is also riddled with inaccuracies. One major one is regarding the type of cameras used. They claim that these are CCDs or charged couple devices, which would make sense since they are measuring wavelengths of light and CCDs are generally better for this type of scientific work. You might be familiar with these type of image sensors if you've ever used a flatbed scanner. However, the cameras that they are actually using are both CMOS, which are very different from CCDs. These cameras are also not the best type to be used for groundbreaking scientific research that is dependent upon minute changes in wavelength and brightness, as these cameras are more designed for amateur hobbyist use, with one camera costing around $250 and another costing around $900. Now don't get me wrong, they are very impressive and useful cameras, just not really for the type of work they're trying to use them for. Finally. They only have one example used as a proof of concept in order to verify the method of distance measurement, which I will get to in a bit. They are imaging and measuring the distance of a water tower 300 meters away. And the distance they calculate this tower to be at using the color metric technique is estimated at 0 to 1 kilometers, which is not very accurate. Yet, the worst part is they're using this to verify the measurement of much, much, much smaller objects moving at incredible speeds and at distances of 10 to 1500 kilometers in altitude, according to the results. To put this another way, they measured a very large, unmoving object that was quite close to them, and it had large inaccurate ranges. Yet they declared it as a valid proof of concept for measuring small, high-speed objects that are at times in orbit. So, now that we got the big issues out of the way, 
The main method they are using to detect and measure the altitude and speed of these objects is a technique called colorimetric measurement. And the simple explanation is this. As light leaves the sun and passes through different material, such as dust, atmospheric gases, and etc., the wavelength is changed due to scattering and other effects. And this changes the color of the object slightly. A good example of this would be the Blue Mountains in Australia, which appear blue due to the light passing through certain parts of the atmosphere, shifting more towards the blue spectrum than reflecting off of the mountains. By analyzing the spectrum of the color of the object, we can guesstimate where about the object is located. This method does work fairly well for distance estimates on objects out in space, but not so much for much closer objects. Additionally, the paper is claiming to measure speed by the brightness of the object and claims that a faster moving object is brighter. If this is in fact the case, the cameras used aren't going to be able to pick up that small of a difference in brightness. Now, a similar method is used for determining speed, but that measures the Doppler shift of light rather than brightness. The faster an object moves towards you, the more the light shifts blue, and the faster an object travels away, the more it shifts red. So while similar, it is also quite different. And I can't find anything to verify this brightness method. So I can't say if it does or does not work. I don't think it does though. The paper also states that two types of UAPs exist. Some are dark and some are bright. They call these phantoms and cosmics. This combined with a wide range of altitudes from 10 to 1500 kilometers, along with a very wide range of speeds, has made a lot of people question if this is possibly just a joke or some type of scientific satire. The paper is stating that unidentified objects, which are dark or bright, high or low, and slow or fast, are all over the skies of Ukraine. Which is very, very true, as this encompasses every object in the skies over Ukraine. Another amusing fact that points towards a possible joke is that the UAPs are classified using the names of birds. And several astronomers on Metabunk have replicated this experiment using both birds and insects flying over the camera and have come up with similar crazy results, showing them to be at very high altitudes and moving at insane speeds faster than orbital speeds. And one particular UAP also raises the eyebrow, especially for anyone familiar with satellites. And it states that two site observations of UAPs at a base of 120 kilometers with two synchronized cameras allowed the detection of a variable object at an altitude of 1,170 kilometers. It flashes for one hundredth of a second at an average of 20 hertz. A rotating or spinning satellite would flash similar to this. And one web satellites were recently launched to the same altitude around the same time as the study, which again, is just kind of strange. And yet another strange twist, the final nail in the coffin has come from alien hunting Harvard astronomer Avi Loeb, who is famous for suggesting that the interstellar asteroid Amumua was really an alien spaceship. Avi has also debunked this article, it has this to say, I showed that an object with a frontal cross-section area of 10 square meters moving at a supersonic speed of 10 kilometers per second must create a bow shock in the Earth's atmosphere and dissipate a mechanical power of 1.5 terawatts at an elevation of 10 kilometers. Data on meteors implies that about a tenth of the kinetic power which is radiated away in the optical band implying that the reported properties of the phantom objects above Ukraine would result in fireballs of visible luminosity above 150 gigawatts. For a path length 10 kilometers, the emission would last at least a second and cannot be missed. I conclude that the reported speeds and sizes of the phantom objects would have generated fireballs of detectable optical luminosity at their suggested distances, and so these objects could not have appeared dark as they did. However, if the phantom objects are 10 times closer than suggested, then their angular motion on the sky corresponds to a physical velocity that is 10 times smaller. 1.5 kilometers per second, and their inferred transverse size would be 0.3 to 1.2 meters, both characteristic of artillery shells. The inferred fireball luminosity scales with distance to the fifth power and is reduced to a modest level of a few megawatts if the distance is shorter by a factor of 10 than suggested by the Ukrainian astronomers. 
if the artillery shells have a frontal diameter of only 10 centimeters, then the inferred fireball luminosity is merely 10 kilowatts, which at a kilometer distance would appear extremely faint, like a 100 watt light bulb at a distance of 100 meters. In other words, after correcting the factor of 10 overestimated in distance, everything falls into place within the parameters of artillery shells. So yes, a scientific article was published that claims to have detected hundreds of UAPs all over the skies of Ukraine. But the paper has seemingly no scientific methods applied to it. It has been shown to possibly be birds, bees, possibly even a satirical joke. And even the famous alien hunter from Harvard has dismissed the UAPs as artillery shells that were measured using inaccurate scientific methods. You can get a copy of the article to read for yourself by a link in the description. Anyways, have a good day.